Will space tourism be tiny or huge by 2030? Meet the three billionaires battling it out to make space tourism a reality. Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin, Richard Branson with Virgin Galactic, and Elon Musk with SpaceX's Dragon. I'm Simon Darling, welcome to Life in 2030. This is one of my weekly prediction videos. At the end of it, I predict how huge space tourism will be by 2030 on a scale of 1 to 10, based on looking at technology, companies, what's to love and jobs. First, let's see whether the three technology challenges for space tourism to be huge by 2030 will be solved or unsolved. What's needed for spacecraft to leave Earth by 2030 will be solved. Each billionaire is taking a different approach. Branson has built a plane called White Knight 2 that takes off like a conventional plane from a runway to carry spaceship Unity up to 50,000 feet. It's then released and launches using a hybrid rocket motor engine. Jeff Bezos's new Shepard spacecraft is a reusable rocket system with a pressurized passenger capsule and a rocket vehicle. It's launched vertically, powered by a liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen based engine. The rocket performs a powered flight for 110 seconds to an altitude of 25 miles, when momentum carries it upwards to 62 miles, 100 kilometers. The rocket then detaches from New Shepard. Elon Musk's SpaceX Dragon spacecraft uses a very similar approach to Blue Origin's New Shepard. Both Branson's and Bezos's companies have been testing for a number of years. Here's Branson's in a test, and here's Bezos's in a test. Elon Musk already flies humans into space, but he has not yet confirmed a date for doing space tourism flights. The technology needed to look at Earth by 2030 is solved. Branson's spaceship Unity carries a total of eight people into space, six passengers and two pilots. For them to look at Earth from space, it's designed with a total of 17 airline-like windows. These windows are bordered by foam handles for best viewing during zero gravity. Their seats have digital displays to show live flight data including speed, remaining time and g-force. The lights are also turned off inside Unity while in space to enhance the visibility of the Earth. Jeff's pilotless New Shepard crew capsule carries a total of six space tourists. The capsule is designed with six large windows measuring 2.4 feet wide by 3.6 feet tall for maximum visibility, the largest windows ever flown in space. They are almost the size of a car windshield, making up over a third of the capsule. There is a seat in each window. The technology needed to get back to Earth by 2030 is also solved. Branson will spend about six minutes in space before heading back to Earth. The pilots raise the craft's wings to its re-entry configuration. This is known as the feathered position. It slows down the spacecraft's rate of descent. Gravity will then pull the spacecraft back towards the Earth decelerating as the air outside thickens. Once the spacecraft returns to the regular atmosphere, the pilots return the wings to their normal configurations in preparation for landing. It then glides back to Spaceport America in New Mexico for a normal runway landing, with a total travel time of 90 minutes. For Blue Origin's New Shepard, getting back to Earth is a little bit different. The crew capsule stays in space until gravity starts pulling it down Parachutes are then deployed for a soft landing. The total flight is 11 minutes. The booster itself is completely reusable and lands itself minutes after takeoff. In summary, because the technologies are solved by 2030, it points to space tourism being at the huge end of the scale. Now, companies. Space tourism will be huge if there are unicorns, startup companies worth more than a billion dollars and big multinationals that are active represented by an elephant. Branson's company Virgin Galactic is already a unicorn. The company's Spaceship 2 project started in 2006 with test flights beginning in 2010. It completed its first human spaceflight in May 2021 and is ready to fly Branson himself up as a space tourist. Since bookings opened in 2011, Virgin Galactic has taken bookings from 600 customers from 60 countries who have paid $250,000 for a seat once they're fully licensed. 
Bezos's company, Blue Origin, is also a unicorn. He's poured money into the company and is heading there himself with his brother Mark, with him saying, ever since I was five years old, I've dreamed of travelling to space. Elon Musk's SpaceX is another unicorn. His Dragon spaceship has already conducted flights to the International Space Station with astronauts on board. It's the first private company to send people to orbit, a feat only previously achieved by governmental space agencies. Unlike Branson and Bezos, who focus on calm and line suborbital space tourism, i.e. flying to 100 kilometers, Elon concentrates more on orbital space tourism, where people spend several days in space. There are a few multinational companies that are active, with Boeing the most notable. It is investing, putting more than $20 million into the startup Virgin Galactic, Boeing is also sending travellers to space. It is the second company contracted by NASA to send astronauts to the International Space Station along with SpaceX. And as part of their agreement, Boeing will have empty seats on some launches which they are permitted to sell to tourists. The cost of a night on the International Space Station is apparently going to be a pretty reasonable $35,000 a night. Because there are unicorns and multinationals that are active, this look at companies points to space tourism being at the high end by 2030. Now we look at what's to love. Space tourism will be huge if it attracts plenty of 5 star ratings and few 1 star. Viewing the Earth will be amazing and scores a definite 5 stars. By 2030, customers of Branson, Bezos and Musk will be able to view the beauty of Earth from the sky. Passengers get dressed in their spacesuit, walk towards the spacecraft, get seated and belted, await countdown to vertically take off, and then see the Earth get smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where the passenger can see the entire Earth and experience zero gravity. Space tourism earns five stars for a life-changing experience. Astronauts report that the experience of viewing firsthand the reality of the Earth in space is emotionally moving. This experience is known as the overview effect, an actual cognitive shift in awareness. Michael Collins, Apollo 11 astronaut, said, The thing that really surprised me was that the Earth projected an air of fragility. And why? I don't know. I had a feeling it's tiny, it's shiny, it's beautiful, it's home, and it's fragile. Wouldn't you love to experience that too? Safety scores three stars. There are risks and challenges involved in space tourism, especially during takeoff and landing. Virgin Galactic's spaceship crashed in 2014 with two pilots on board while landing the aircraft. One died while the other sustained serious injuries. Blue Origin's new Shepard exploded in 2011 at an altitude of 45,000 feet after a malfunction. It had no passengers. Whilst every precaution is taken blasting into space, it has inherent safety risks. For affordability, space tourism scores two stars only. Branson's and Bezos's and Musk's flights to space are far from cheap. Branson charges a booking fee of $250,000 to reserve a seat in his spacecraft, but you do get to keep your jumpsuits, underwear and boots. After discovering her husband had bought a ticket for her in 2011, this is what one of the expected passengers had to say. I went through a lot of crazy emotions like, did you really buy this? Do we still have enough money to remodel the kitchen? Today she is still waiting for the trip. A passenger to accompany Bezos in his July 2021 flight paid a whopping $28 million for a seat in an online auction in June 21. Over the next few years the price will come down considerably but it will still be out of the reach of most. From the point of view of the amount of love travellers will be giving by 2030, the intensity of the five stars points to it being at the higher end of the scale. Now we look at jobs. If space tourism is huge, then there are going to be lots of jobs hired and fired. Disneyland workers will be fired if one day space tourism takes spending money away from trips there. On the hired side, Branson's Virgin Galactic team has 109 job vacancies listed on LinkedIn at the time of recording, including as finance, structural engineer, stress engineer, project scheduler, astronaut relations and the all-important quality inspector. 
It's well worth looking at LinkedIn if you're interested in getting a job in the space tourism sector. Helping you make good career decisions is a big reason why I'm doing the Life in 2030 channel. Jobs in fast growing new sectors like space tourism are exciting and more secure than in older sectors. At the moment, jobs in space tourism are centered on the US. Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin and SpaceX are all headquartered in the US. The Chinese are the other big players having a space program that will probably include space tourists one day. You could set up some job alerts for these companies, it's easy to do on LinkedIn, and check out my Finding Great Jobs for Life in 2030 course. Because there's plenty of jobs being hired and fired, from a jobs point of view, space tourism is at the huge end of the scale. Now we've covered all four sections, it's time for me to make a prediction. We've seen the technology needed is solved, there are plenty of unicorns, it gets an overall four star rating and plenty of jobs being hired. That means that on a scale of one to 10, space tourism is at the huge end of the scale by 2030 at a nine. To get updates on predictions, sign up for my Life in 2030 newsletter. Click the subscribe button so you see our regular flow of fascinating new predictions. Go and have a look now at this prediction or that one I'll see you in the next video.